Hello, my name is Chris Hammond. I'm the director of training here at Data New Corporation. In this brief video, we're going to go into the an overview of the module settings within .NET Nuke. Now what we're going to take a look at are the module settings that will apply or be available for all modules, as well as a section within module settings called the page settings. Now after we look at the page settings, we'll find that some modules have custom settings available to us on the module settings page. We'll take a look at an example of those settings as well. So we're going to be working with .NET Nuke Professional version 5.6.0. But all of the settings that we're going to be taking a look at are, are not specific to .NET Nuke Professional. They apply to the Community Edition as well as the Enterprise Edition of .NET Nuke. Now I'm going to go ahead and navigate to the test page that I previously created. And we'll find that we have a simple announcements module here on the page. Now I'm currently logged in as a host account, but I could just as easily log in with an administrator account for this portal and get to the same settings. To access the settings, we need to be in the edit mode in the control panel, and from there we can go to the actions menu for our module and choose the settings option. This will take us to our module settings for the announcements module. So when you go into the module settings, the first section you're going to find is a basic settings section. The very first option there is the culture, and then the second option is what module this actually is. So this is the announcements module. You can see that that, set, that setting there is actually grayed out, meaning we cannot change it. It's just telling us that this is the announcements module. As you start to build up a .NET Nuke site and utilize more and more modules, it may become difficult to figure out which modules are being used where. By going into the settings, you can figure out what a type of module is. Now the next option we get is the title for a module. You can change the title for a module at any point in time. So I can come in here and simply change it to be latest announcements. The title for a module will be displayed based on the container that's in use for the module. We'll see how to define the container here in a little bit. Now if your website is using taxonomy or folksonomy within .NET Nuke, those options will show up here in the list of tags. This website currently is not configured for that. Now we've already taken a look at the permissions grid for our module settings within the permissions video found in the .NET Nuke library. So you can reference that for further information about permissions. After the permissions grid, we get into an advanced settings section. First option there is display module on all pages. That checkbox will do just that. When we check that box and we update the settings, this module will display on every page of our .NET Nuke website it will show up in whatever pane the module is currently in on every one of those pages. If for some reason that pane doesn't exist based on the skin that's in use on one of those pages, the module will default to the content pane. So this is a very powerful setting. It's also something you have to be careful with when you're using. When you check that box, it literally will place the module on every page. If you want to remove it from a specific page, you then have to go to that page and delete the module. Now the next option here is called Hide Admin Border. Well, if you add a module to a page that is only visible to administrators, .NET Nuke will outline that module in a red, red border and have a message that says visible only to administrators. You can turn that, that border off if you wish using the settings here. The header and footer sections allow you to insert HTML or other content before and after the content of your modules. Typically you do that if you want to customize CSS very specifically for a module, but most times people will not need to use the header or footer settings. The start date and the end date settings work like the start date and end date on a page when you create pages. You can turn a module on or turn a module off based on the date. Next option here, added to pages, would show us a list of all the pages that this particular announcements module is copied to. At this point, this module is not placed anywhere else, so we don't see any other instances listed here. Now we get into the page settings. This really kind of allows us to control the look and feel of our module. The very first option there is an icon option. If we would like, we can have an icon associated with our modules. That icon will be displayed based on the container that's in use. Typically, a container would have the icon up next to the title for a module. Most case, in most cases, you will not use the icon setting. The next three settings, alignment, color, and border, are settings that are holdovers from the original versions of .NET Nuke and should no longer be utilized. 
those settings should be coming from your module container which we'll take a look at here in a moment the next option is collapse and expand well within modules if your container supports it you can have modules that display their content automatically have their content minimized or turn off the minimize maximize functionality typically I would come in and turn that off for my module the next option is display container a container will wrap a wrap a module with a title and either a div tag or some other element in HTML it wraps around the the module and its content you'll often use that for styling purposes so a lot of times you'll want to turn off a container so you can uncheck that box that will make it so that the container does not display when you're in view mode when you are in edit mode or layout mode the container will always display for a module that's because the container controls where the actions menu goes if you don't have an actions menu for a module you can't get to the settings or you can't get to the edit interface that's why you have to have the container displaying whenever you're in edit mode or layout mode if you'd like a printer friendly mode for your module and your container supports it you can check the next box for allow print the same thing goes for allow syndicate if you want to provide an RSS link for your module the next option is is a web slice web slices are a feature supported supported in Internet Explorer 8 that allow you to kind of wrap content on a page that will be selectable or highlightable by Internet Explorer and people can subscribe to certain portions of a page so they would receive a notification when that content on a page changes the next option there is our module container we'll talk more about module containers in a future video when we talk about skins and containers but here we can choose to override the page container so if we want to define a very specific container on this module we can choose one from the list next option there is our cache settings we can control which caching provider this module is going to use can also control the duration for the caching after that we get some advanced settings the advanced settings allow us to take all of the settings that we've just configured here in page settings and make those the default settings for any new modules that get added to our site or the second checkbox allows us to apply these settings to all the existing modules currently on the site so we can change the container, we can change the collapse and expand options, we can change the allow print and allow syndicate by simply applying these settings to all modules. Now the very last option there is move to page. If we want to move this module to a different page, we can choose from the drop down list here of available pages. Now after that we get into the custom settings for a module. Now not all modules will have custom settings. But if they do, they can be displayed here after the page settings within the module settings page. The announcements module you can see has a number of custom settings here. We'll talk about the custom settings specifically for the announcements module in a future video. But if we go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of the page, we'll find that we have an option here to update, which will save our settings. We can delete, which will allow us to remove the module from the page, or we can simply cancel. I'll go ahead and click update to apply the settings and we should now see once the page loads that our module title has changed it now says latest announcements we don't we no longer have the minimize maximize plus minus sign that was in the top right corner but other than that we really didn't make any changes so as you place modules onto pages you'll see that you can go into the settings for those individual modules and make changes to those if you're looking for more information about our .NET Nuke training program, please feel free to check out the .NET Nuke training page located under the Resources tab on .NET Nuke.com. There you'll find links to a variety of free training videos that we provide, as well as our upcoming schedule of online instructor-led training sessions. We also offer custom on-site and online training. You can also use the shortcut URL here. Remember that it is case-sensitive. That will take you to the training page on .NET Nuke.com. Once again, this is Chris Hammond with .NET New Corporation. Thanks for watching the video.